Hey guys, Forrest here with Fofo Astro, and I'm actually setting up for an observing run tonight. Um, we have a rare clear night in Missoula um, in the winter, and it looks like it's actually going to be clear all night long. So my plan is to capture some data of the Sol Nebula. So I've been working on a Sol Nebula project for a really long time, and I've actually gotten 75 hours of total integration time, which is probably overkill, but I really want to get like super deep on this object and get really good data. The problem is previously I photographed my or I imaged my um, blue channel and green channel data on almost a full moon night and it was to the point that the data was pretty unusable. So my plan is tonight to re-image both the blue filter and the green filter because I've got um, a totally moonless clear sky which I need to take advantage of. Now what I want to do today in the video is actually walk you guys through my sequence generator pro setup for this project. So we're going to start at the beginning look at what we need to do and then build the sequence together so you guys can see how I use SGP in order to work my observing run. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so the first thing I did here was I actually opened my different image files just to remind myself of how bad the data was. And you guys can see on the left here, I've got my nice red filter data and you can see there's good contrast between everything, everything looks good. This is just opened up in pics in sight. Um, but my green mosaic and my blue mosaic, especially the bottom panel, have quite a bit of issues. And most of that's due, one, because of bad flats, um, but also due to the fact that I just simply imaged on a night with too much moon. So the thing that I need to do is, if I look back at kind of my history, I, I made a little notepad note here. Um, I like to make notes so that I can remember what I'm trying to do for a night because when you go to set up something in Sequence Generator Pro it can take a little bit of time and kind of you can lose where you are. So basically my B and G filter need to be reshot and I also want to add H alpha for better color in the reds later on. I don't have enough time for this tonight though because I'm limited with how much uh, clear sky that there will be. Um, so I'm really going to prioritize the B and G filters because I can shoot hydrogen alpha any night I want to. It doesn't need to be a moonless night like tonight. Um, previously, each panel of my mosaic had 15 600 second exposures going into it, so those are 10 minute exposures. So here's my plan. My plan is to shoot the top of the Sol Nebula uh, with a blue filter, 15 frames, and then shoot flats with the blue filter. Um, then I'm going to shoot lights with the green filter of the top of the nebula, 15 frames, then flats in G. Then I'm going to slew to the bottom of the nebula, 15 frames, B flats, and then same thing with green on the bottom of the nebula, 15 frames, and green flats. So the reason I'm shooting flats twice is because when the telescope refocuses, when the telescope slews, it's going to slightly change things. So I want to make sure that I have flats for each filter for each thing. So what I did here is I'm going to pop into Sequence Generator Pro. Um, and I'm actually VPNing into my computer in my observatory right now, so things are going to run a little bit slowly, but I want to walk you guys through this. So let me close this out. The first thing that you're always going to want to do in SGP is make sure that inside of Tools and Equipment Profile Manager that all of your gear is set up correctly. And this is one of those things that takes a little bit of kind of kajiggering and working with for quite a while to make sure you have down. Um, but I have this little profile over here for my telescope, my camera, my filter wheel and my mount, very easy. File naming pattern is a pretty thing, a thing you kind of want to play with. That's uh, maybe the topic of a future video is how I organize my files. Uh, but the big thing is you want to go folder by folder, tab by tab, I should say, and configure all your different pieces of gear. So I've got my camera here, I've got my filter wheel here. I'm going to be shooting at negative 20 degrees Celsius. I'm going to have it cool down to that in five minutes. Um, my filters, I'm using an attic filter wheel driver, so I've got the ASCOM driver there. Uh, focuser, I'm using a GC USB end step, so I've got that there. I am using autofocus to help me get perfect focus. Um, autofocus is probably another topic of its own video, uh, but getting these autofocus settings set correctly, this is what has always worked for me, um, not necessarily work for you, so it's definitely one of those things to experiment with. Um, your telescope is your mount, so I have my Gemini mount in here. I do use plate solving to help me find the area. I also use auto guiding and I have it linked with PHD2, so that's very easy. And then inside of other, I've got my flat box. I don't have a rotator, so I don't have to worry about that. And then I have it connected to my roof controller. <clears throat> I don't have a safety monitor yet. If you watch my last video, I talk about having a safety monitor um, and having the safety monitor monitor the voltage of my panels. I'm gonna go through a, or not of my panels, of my batteries. I'm gonna have a special video on how I configure that once I get to that point. 
And then I've got my environment sensing, which is just gonna basically monitor whether uh, it's cloudy or not. And it just puts it in the fits uh, header of each image. So it just makes it kind of easy. So you make sure that this is all set. I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna save it. I didn't really change anything. Um, I'm gonna save it and then I'm gonna go to File, New Sequence with Profile. And this is very important. You always wanna start fresh because if you have an old sequence and you made changes to your equipment profile, those old changes are not gonna come through. So we really wanna make sure that we make a new sequence with this specific equipment profile. We're gonna hit OK and it's gonna pop up a new sequence for us here. Now this is where we're gonna build all of our different uh, events into our sequence. And a lot of it should be pretty st straightforward. I'm gonna make sure I'm storing my images on my desktop. You'll notice it pulled the file naming scheme from my equipment profile uh, area, so that's great. Um, it also pulled my user profile. User profile is not as important. That just puts like the latitude and longitude and elevation of your observing site into each photograph, into the fits header, so it's kinda nice. And then I've got all my equipment here. Now I'm not gonna connect any equipment yet. Um, again, I'm running on solar, so I wanna conserve power here. I, I like to connect to my equipment as late in the game as possible. But what I can do is work on my target over here and get the targets configured. Now, the big thing that I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna make sure that my targets are set up to be basically the bottom and the top of my previous mosaic targets. And the way that you can do that um, is, and I'm gonna do it off camera because it'll take it a while for me to copy the file over to this computer. Um, but you'll notice that there is a way to, so you can populate a link from a, um, like an astro bin or something like that. And that'll have you centered on the target and we'll probably do that in a later photo or a later video. But what I'm actually gonna do is I am going to go into my tools and I'm gonna go to the framing and mosaic wizard. And what this lets you do is this actually lets Sequence Generator Pro build a mosaic um, depending on how many images you need of the object. And it's a really cool way to do it. Um, I like to base mine on a previous image that I've taken. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna off camera go grab another image and I'll be back in just a second. I gotta copy it to my observatory computer. All right, so because I uh, was trying to grab an image from my other computer and drag it over to the computer in the observatory, and it turns out that I dragged a mosaic over so it didn't have the, la the uh, right ascension and declination in the fits header, ran into a bunch of problems. I don't have any images locally on my observatory computer. So what we're gonna do instead is we're just gonna grab this astro bin link right here um, from this guy, Thomas Richter. Nice shot, wow, that's beautiful, man. There are just such amazing astrophotographers out there and it's really cool. This is good to see. You guys should go check his work out. Really cool shot. Um, thanks for your URL, Thomas. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do right here is in this Framing and Mosaic Wizard, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to click right here and I'm going to paste in that link that I just grabbed off Astro Bin. We're gonna go to Fetch and hopefully if all goes well, yep, there we go. Um, it goes ahead, ahead and finds it for us. Now, a couple quick important things about this framing in Mosaic Wizard. Uh, the first and most important is that you need to make sure that your camera data down here under this section is adequate. Um, I recommend doing 20% overlap at least, but you're gonna make sure that you're, you need to make sure that your scale in arc seconds per pixel, as well as your pixels are all in there perfectly. The other thing that you're gonna to wanna to do um, is choose with the mouse to either draw the target rectangle or move the target rectangle. Either way will work. And feel free to move this thing out of the way if you can't. Now, this is really annoying um, using a slow computer with this whole process, uh, but we'll do our best to make it work. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna drag out over the sole nebula, something like that. That's about the uh, field of view that I'm looking for. I'm gonna drag out over here and we're gonna let it decide what it wants to do. Now it's saying four images and I definitely don't want this to be four images because I think that that's gonna be really annoying. I also happen to know that our rotation with respect to this object is about 90 degrees. So I'm gonna just drag it around because that's about what it looks like um, from our, my perspective with my camera being rotated. Now the only way that I know that is just because I've shot this object before so that I have a little bit of a um, idea about it. But what we're gonna do I'm just gonna make this a little bit smaller. I'm gonna decide that we want two camera tiles by one camera tile. Actually, I guess it would be one by two right here. There we go. 
and we're gonna move it around and I'm just gonna get it positioned roughly where we want that to be. Something like that. So get the object real clean, real nice and easy. Now, I should say, we're actually gonna have to hit this create sequence button down here in order to make this happen. Now, what I recommend doing is we're gonna pick a name up here for our sequence. I'm just gonna call this, um, let's call it soul mosaic something like that. And we are going to replace the targets in the sequence. We are going to tell it to slew and then center on location. So what this means is when you start your sequence, you're basically issuing a slew command to the telescope to slew to that object. And then it's going to issue the center command using plate solving to actually center on the object. And the important part about that is that you, uh, you wanna make sure you choose the adequate option here uh, according to where you're gonna be in your sequence. And, and what I mean by that is a lot of you guys might be using like DSLRs on sky trackers. Um, sky trackers or sky guiders, whatever you happen to be using, most of those don't have a motorized deck or RA axis um, or a, a slewable deck or RA axis, I should say. Um, they're more of like set the position, excuse me, turn on the tracker and run with it. And in that case, you would say, do not move to location. And you wouldn't even be teaching your SGP about your mount. Uh, but in this case, I'm gonna go right here. Um, I'm not gonna do any rotator validation of camera angle because I don't have a rotator, so there's no way to do that. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And what that should do, it says sequence is already targeted, no way to validate the angle is set correctly. That's okay, there's no way for me to validate that the angle is set correctly anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and create that. Now, what this does, and this is where it gets super cool, is this is that sequence that I created earlier with the profile. So we made that sequence, we created it with a profile, awesome, easy. What it's done is it's made us two targets here in our sequence. One is the first panel of that mosaic and the other is the second panel of that mosaic. So all I need to do is I'm gonna need four mission objectives per target. So I'm gonna remove a mission objective down here I'm gonna say that I only want four events and I'm gonna to go to Soul Mosaic 2 and I'm also gonna remove a mission objective here. Now I like to do this all first just because it makes a lot of sense to my brain. I'm also going to go back to on, on Soul Mosaic 2 which will run second and I'm going to click right here um, once it loads under this event pause area and I'm gonna tell the telescope that before option event four, event four is going to be the flats for my second filter in the second area of the sky. I'm gonna tell it to park the telescope at that point. Um, that means that just in case it'll park the telescope a little bit early, which will be great, I'll get the roof closed and I'll wake up to a closed roof, which is nice. Note, you don't have to do that. If everything's configured correctly and you do have an observatory, um, it, it will close when the sequence is done, if you have it correctly, but I like to close it a little bit early. I don't know why I'm anal about that. All right, so Soul Mosaic 1. We want the first event to be a light. We want the filter to be green. We'll start with green. Um, again, slow computer battle here. We're gonna filter green, no suffix. Exposure, we want 10 minutes. And binning, we're gonna do one to one. We're gonna repeat this for 15 frames. Uh, the next one that we're gonna do, and I just remembered something, I'm gonna do a little cheater move here. I'm gonna remove two of these events. This is a good thing for you guys to see. I'm now gonna do the second event is a light through a blue filter. Again, we're gonna do 600 seconds, okay, or 10 minutes. And again, we're gonna repeat 15 times. Now, what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna check both of these so that they're set to run. And I'm gonna go up to Tools, Flats Wizard, and I'm gonna tell the flat wizard to add events to the selected target after each light event. And what this is gonna do is I have previously gone in and run the flats calibration wizard, which figures out how much brightness it needs to create a proper flat through each filter. And what this does, if I just hit okay here, it's going to automatically add flats for green with 6.84 second exposure, repeat 25 times, and another one for blue, five second exposure, repeat 25 times. That's a preset that I've built into the software previously using the tools flats calibration wizard. You just gotta take like an hour and run that um, and you can figure out how that all works. Now I'm gonna go down to Soul Mosaic 2. Again, I'm gonna delete two of these events because we're gonna use the flats profile or the flats jet wizard again. 
Uh, now we're on the second one. So uh, basically what the SGP is going to do is it's going to slew to that first target that we specified, uh, which is the first panel of that mosaic. And it's going to shoot 15 lights. We can click on it. It's going to shoot 15 lights through the green filter. Then it's going to shoot 25 green flats. Then it's going to shoot 15 lights through the blue filter and 25 blue flats, which is super sweet. At that point, it's going to slew a little bit to the second panel of the mosaic. Awesome. And we're going to have it do the same thing. So we're going to do lights through the green filter and we're going to do a 10 minute exposure. Same exact thing as we have before. And we're going to repeat that 15 times and we're going to turn that on. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to do lights through a blue filter. We're going to repeat that. Uh, we're going to do 10 minutes and we're going to repeat that again 15 times. And you'll notice as I do this, it's starting to tick up the amount of time that the night is going to take. It's going to take eight hours so far with what we've set. Obviously, this stuff takes time, so you're going to have to run into that. Now, again, we're going to go to tools and we're going to go to flats wizard. We're going to add flat events to selected target after each light event. We're going to hit OK and boom, there are flats for green. There are flats for blue. Now, like I showed you before, I'm going to go to this flats for blue and I'm going to tell the telescope to park before it shoots blue flats. Is that at all necessary? No, it's just because I'm anal and I want to park my telescope as soon as possible because parking the telescope for me means closing the roof and I like to sleep soundly with a closed roof. It's just what I like. Now, at this point, you could totally add another event um, for darks. So if I wanted it to start shooting some darks, I could or some bias. And, and if I didn't have a bunch of darks and a bunch of bias already saved up at negative 20 degrees, I would totally do that. But in this case, I already have a big dark library set up and a big um, dark uh, bias library set up. So I don't really need to worry about that in this case. So this is how I would set this up. I've got my first target. I've got my second target. They're all configured correctly. I'm now going to go up and I'm going to go file and I'm going to save this sequence. Uh, and I'm just going to call it Soul Mosaic just in case I happen to have a computer crash or I need to restart anything. Um, SGP is a little finicky, you'll find. Sometimes you have to restart it or uh, just things get hung up. So it's a good practice to get into, um, go in there and save your sequence when you're done. So from this point forward, all I need to do is connect all of my different bits of equipment, which is these buttons over here in the upper right. And then I need to hit the run sequence button and that will actually start the sequence running. Me personally, I usually wait until it's dark outside. Um, <clears throat> I don't let the any sort of safety monitor do that. I'll wait until it's dark and I'll connect all my equipment. I'll uh, wait till my camera up here cools down to its negative 20 degrees and then I'll hit that run button. And usually I'll monitor SGP for the first five or 10 minutes, at least through the focus acquisition. Once focus is acquired, then I'll usually let it run on its own and hopefully uh, just watch it work really well. That's always the goal, right? <laughs> All right, you guys, hopefully that was a helpful video for you. I know it was kind of long. I have a lot of videos planned that I want to do on Sequence Generator Pro. I think it's one of these programs that, as you can see, saves you so much time. Like literally, I'm going to hit the go button tonight. I'm going to monitor it from probably six o'clock to seven o'clock, just as I'm like milling around the house. I'll keep an eye on the laptop screen. But since it's going to be clear all night and since I don't really anticipate any other issues, I imagine I'll be able to go to bed, wake up in the morning at 6 a.m. and everything will be done, parked and complete, which is so, so, so nice. So. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea on how to use this. If you guys have anything specific that you see in this video and you want a video made on about SGP, let me know down in the comments. If you liked the video, hit that like button. If you learned something, I would really appreciate that like button being hit. Hit subscribe if you guys want to stay up, for up to date with future videos, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.